Praise the Lord. Amen. I know it's not quite time yet to start the service, but I thought we have the third seal to get to, and maybe if we could just start singing a couple songs to warm ourselves up and get into the spirit of the service. Amen. Amen. So while we're waiting for our friends, whoever could be on the way. Uh, so let's just sing a couple songs in the meantime. Um, anybody has a favorite you'd like for us to practice? Uh, with just a few of us here. Uh, I'm looking at number 137 here. There's power in the blood. Amen. <clears throat> Or if you'd like, we could say, He abides. Or, well, Richard, what's your, what's your recommendation for tonight? What's that? What, what song would you like for us to that, sing? That was alright. 137? Yeah. There's power in the blood? Yeah. Amen. Let's sing that one. Would you be free from your burden? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood.
to Jesus, there is power in the blood. Even tonight, enough power to heal, enough power to fill us with the Holy Ghost, enough power to cause us to triumph over everything Amen. in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My, 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 my. Thank you, Jesus. So, we want to open the service with prayer. If you have a spoken request, praise the Lord. We got a, a little early start here, Sister Victoria. But we thought we just want to warm ourselves up in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. So now if you have a spoken request, yes, Brother David? Yes, let's pray for Sister Elise, Brother Brennan's wife. Uh, she was fixing something in her house and, and she uh, fell off of a chair and broke her arm. Mm -hmm. So I went yesterday there and they, uh, they didn't have a, an orthopedist, how do you call it? Ortho, uh, the doctor that fixes the bones, he wasn't ready uh, yesterday, so they just kind of bandaged it and held it like this and sent her home. That Today she was supposed to go back for whatever they're going to do permanently, surgery or whatever. So let's remember her in prayer tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Brother Anyone Brother else? Brother. Yes, Brother Richard. Uh, Brother Massey wanted me to ask the church to pray for Brother Bowright. He's not doing too good. He got that virus. And yes. About a week or two. Let's remember Brother Richard. Now God is real, my friends. Amen. He's a real deliverer. When the praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Success doing fine? Yes. Yes, my sister. In traffic, yes. My my my. When we were driving back from your place, my family was saying, My, look all the way these folks have to drive. And they are in every service. So it was quite an inspirational to have come to your place. Mm -hmm. And we thank the Lord for that evening. Praise God. I had a wonderful time today with Brother Smart. He came over and we just, uh, I, I couldn't even do what I had planned to do in the afternoon because we spent so much time talking there in the house. Let's just continue to pray for him and the family as he is doing for us. It's a great hour for God's people to come together, mm -hmm. to come together, where there's togetherness, unity, there's power. Satan cannot resist. So, if you have an unspoken request, just raise your hand to God. Say, Lord, remember me. Mm -hmm. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we solemnly come to this hour Lord, we come hum humbly, Lord. We come knowing that we are undone and insufficient. But Lord, as we were singing here about the blood of Jesus Christ, there is a power in that blood to send every sin to its original elements, to send everything, Lord, away from us, Lord, every unrighteousness. Knowing that we're living in a world that's dark, full of ambushes laid out by Satan everywhere, every turn. But Lord, we have a, a big brother, Jesus, that watches over us. And Lord, we call upon you tonight. We call upon you tonight, Father, for our brother Richard. We know you're God. We know, Father, that there's nothing too hard for you. And Lord, you told us, O oh Lord Jesus, I heard your prophet say these words, the God that thundered on Mount Sinai, that same God that thundered on Calvary, said it is finished. And Lord, the same question, sickness question, the answer, Lord, was produced right there at Calvary, where the blood of Jesus Christ was was. was Oh, Lord, shed on the ground. And he screamed himself, it is finished. Lord God, we pray tonight that the Spirit of God would anoint our faith and the faith of our brother Richard together. 
that, Lord, we may see a mighty deliverance, Lord, that our brother will come through, Father. Your spirit is still real. Your power to heal is still real tonight, Father. We call on you, Lord Jesus, as a little group, Lord, just a few of us, Father, just a little handful. But we are grateful, Father, that you said we're two or three, for if you took 2,000 or 3,000, we couldn't make it, Father. But you said two or three gathered together, and my name, I would be in their midst. So we have confidence that your presence is here, Lord. Oh, hear us, Almighty God, and deliver Brother Richard both right from that virus. Cause him to triumph, O oh Lord, and to look up and give thanks to God. Yes. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, oh, that every child of God, because many we know are afflicted, not only here in Charlotte, not only here in America, but all around the globe, where God's people are cornered by one thing or another, Father, may the power of the Holy Spirit go, Lord, and set every captive free tonight, Father. We pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that you would remember our sister Liz, Lord, with a broken arm. Lord, the doctor can fix the bones, but you must send healing, Father. Yes. We pray that you will do it, Father, for the glory of thy name. And tonight, Lord Jesus, we have come... On a night call, see Brother Richard here, way early, waiting, Lord, to get in, Father, waiting for the doors to be opened. Lord God, such an expectation, Father, to see these other brothers walk in, Brother Allen, Brother uh, Aaron, Brother Joshua, Lord, and Sister Victoria, all in the little home here also. Father, we just come here to receive something from you. May there come that stimulation of the revelation, Lord, that will make us different people when we walk out of this church tonight, Father. We know that some could be on the way, Father. Make a way for them, Lord. Fill us full of the Holy Ghost, the power to fly away from this sin-cursed world and go into the arms of Jesus Christ. Meet Him in the air. Lord, give us that quickening power. We commit now the rest of the service into Thine own hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, and for his sake we pray, amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I, I feel a little funny for not taking up the offering. I was going to just push the button, but let's just do this here to make the service complete. Amen. Brother Leach, will you offer a word of prayer over this? Oh, here comes Sister Elizabeth. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my sister. Let us pray. Thank you for giving us a nice place to worship in. Yes, Father. Yes, my Lord. And, and everybody come, come here to speak about what a lovely place this is. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you have did for us. Yes, Lord, our God. And touch everybody's heart. Yes, and Lord Jesus. Tonight, Lord, they, mm -hmm. they take you with them, Lord. Yes, Father. For we ask it in your precious name, Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, our brother is passing around. I'll get to the message now. Praise God. Praise God. So it's just two hours and 12 minutes. You should be able to finish all of it tonight.
us about blessings as we are needy people and in this great hour that we're now living and we see yearly it gets darker and darker to the world and the coming of the Lord gets brighter and brighter as he reveals himself in, the, in his word and in his manifestation. We have come again tonight, Lord, to attempt uh, this need and to pray the uh, open to us, Lord, this uh, third seal of this book that it might be uh, known to us that we would know what to do and how to live and how to be better Christians. I pray, God, that you'll make every unchristian in here tonight realize their need of you. Grant it. And I, I pray, Heavenly Father, that every born-again Christian will realize that he must live closer than he has in the past. So we might all be in that unity of Christian love and faith. Grant that every sick person in our midst will be healed tonight, Lord. They do realize their need of you. And I pray, Father, that you'll bless everything that's done or said to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. tonight, we will assemble together again for this, the uh, Wednesday night of the week, and we're trusting the Lord tonight for a, a great outpouring of His blessings upon His Word. And today I have been studying as usual and trying to think of the things that would be more appropriate to say and the thing, how to say it, and then depending on the Lord, to give to me the interpretation uh, and meanings of, of this word that's written. And I'm grateful to him for what he has done for us through the week that we of the opening of these seals. Now, perhaps it would be a good thing if Sunday morning, you know, many times we don't mean to be misunderstood, but, you know, it gets that way. And uh, so maybe Sunday morning, if all who has a question in their mind concerning it would write it out and give it on the desk here Saturday night and uh, so I can see what it is and then I'll try to answer it for you Sunday morning. Or, but I think that'd be better than what we were planning because um, uh, sometimes it's misunderstood, you know, and so that way I'll get it be better that I would, I would get a screech, you know, it would be just what it should be. Well, sometime I, someone called today and said and, uh, and the caller wanted to know if it was true that when the, the rapture had taken place, it would be one in Jeffersonville and one in New York and the rest of them overseas. So I see it just misunderstood. And then someone said uh, uh, Saturday night, if the Lord uh, give to us the last seal and Jesus would be here Sunday morning. <laughs> so it's a... It's a you see, you, you don't, that, that isn't so. Uh, you know, that isn't, we don't know. If anyone tells you that they know when he's coming, you know they're wrong to begin with. Well, no one knows that. But we want to live today like it was right now. I'm going to kind of turn you around for a minute, so be ready. I, I believe Jesus will come within less than three minutes from right now of his time. <laughs> about 35 years. <laughs> See, 1,000 years is only one day with him. <laughs> so when you hear the apostle back here said, the time is at hand, or the time is at hand. The apostle said that in the Revelations. You know how long has been that has been that just yesterday to God? Not even two days yet. And see, if it's three minutes, less than three minutes of his coming, see, that'd be 30 years back to us. Or something on that order. Look how I want three minutes to be to him. He's already rising up to come. <laughs> so we have, sometimes when you read here, he's speaking in the terms of the word. See, not in our terms. And then if I knew he was coming tomorrow night, 
the more nights, the more I would study and ask them to give me the message for the fourth seal. I got here preaching just the same. Uh, I would be doing every day just what I would be doing if he comes. And I was going over to the better place and be caught right at the post to do this. Right at the post to do this. So we just keep carrying on until he comes. Sometimes when we just read, now be real careful. And when you read, uh, get the tapes, listen to them real close because you get it on the tape because they've been playing them tapes back and they're really good and plain. So you get it clear there. Now, Everybody in love with Christ, I hope, tonight, and everybody <laughs> loving Him. i tell you what, sometimes what confuses the people, that uh, someone that come in and didn't get the first part of the service, you see. Then they come in and they hear you refer it back, get back something, and then they take that what said they didn't get the first part, then it's all confusing to them, you see that. And they do think that something was said different, but it, but it isn't. So uh, if you got a question that you don't understand, just write it on a piece of paper, lay it in any time between now and Saturday night. And I'll try Sunday morning to, if it's a little puzzling, you say, well, I'm wondering just what this meant here. I didn't get it. You know what I mean? And I'll try to answer for you Sunday morning. Oh, we're willing. Now, tonight we're going to read uh, from this blessed old word again in the sixth chapter. And we start tonight with the third seal. And that is the fifth verse, the fifth and sixth verse. And tomorrow night, we close the four riders, the white horse, and the red horse, and black horse, and pale horse. And I want to say this, that each time, even till this morning, about, I get up real, real early and go to prayer before things stir. And just keep on praying through the day. But this morning early, and the Holy Spirit came to where I was, and just as plain as anything I, I've seen, I, I, he hears me, I know, and I'm very grateful. Now, uh, you just remember that uh, there is something happening, and I, I hope you're catching it. <laughs> and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. But see thou hurt not the oil and wine. Amen. Now, let's background this just a little bit. And all the seals that we have passed, because just like in the church ages, while we try to give a background to kind of lap it over, that's the way the ages are actually in the scripture. One laps the other one over. Just like that, like climbing a ladder and uh, climbing a step, rather, one running down to the other, coming back like that as you go up a step. And now, this seal. The, it's a, the book of redemption sealed. Everybody understand that? And this book is sealed with seven seals. It is a seven sealed book. And I remember as we pictured it out to you and took it from Jeremiah, uh, they, what they, have, they wrote like this on a piece of, of a script or paper rather, or not paper, but it was a uh, hide. And they rolled it up like this. Now that, and then the end of it was left like that. That denotes what's there. Then the next one takes the same kind of position, rolls up the same way, rolled like that. And then at the end here, it's torn off like that and left another one. Well, that was the seven sealed book. Now, we never had books like this to lately. The books in the old time were scrolls. They were rolled up. And then what they want the subject or anything like if, if the Bible's rolled up, you want to read the book of Isaiah, you turn down here to Isaiah and unroll it like that. Read it. And this is a seven sealed book of redemption. And now we find that the Lamb comes out, takes the book out of the hand that he has set up on the throne, 
and it breaks the seals and uh, and uh, lo and loosens that loosens the seals to the people. And the four beasts sitting there that we talk in the church ages, the same four beasts, you see them all the way through the scripture. And they are the one who does the announcing of these uh, seals being broke. Now, and we see it is a, a book of redemption. Then we went back and got the, the kinsman redeemer and picked him up to see what his work was. And now, for all these years, Christ has been doing the kinsman redeemer work. Now, I don't understand that's a amen. He has been doing the work of the kinsman redeemer. But there will come a time that when the redeeming work will be over. And when the redeeming work is over, then he leaves the throne of God where he's seated now. But that's not his throne. He that overcometh shall sit with me in my throne as I have overcome and sat down on my father's throne. That's not his throne. That belongs to Spirit God, Christ the Lamb that doesn't belong to him. He is the incarnate God, see, which is the same God made incarnate. Now, he rises from the sea. First, the announcement went forth for um, uh, who is able to come and, read and take this book of redemption. See, for the whole plan of redemption from Adam, all that Adam lost, there was nothing lost until Adam, and after Adam, all was lost, and the earth and uh, everything on the creation of the earth was lost and everything fell with Adam across the chasm that no one could get back no way at all man when he sinned he left his way he left no way back for himself and then the, when this question was asked John the revelator that the prophet John was in the vision and saw it and there was no man in heaven, no man on earth, no man beneath the earth, or nobody was even worthy to look at the book. See? Now just think of that. Then the Lamb comes forward and he takes the book. Now John was asked not to weep anymore. He said, Behold, the line of Judah has prevailed. And, and he can take the book and open it. So he turned to look for a lion and he saw a lamb. The elder called, said, a lion has prevailed. But when he got and looked, it was a lamb coming out from the throne. I had never noticed that before. Why? He had been back there and he was doing his mentorial work. Or he was bleeding for the people, intercessing. For the people until the last soul that was put on the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world come in. There's just going to be so many of them there and that's it. That's all. The others won't even want to come in. They have no desire to come in. And so then when that last soul comes in then the time of redemption is finished. Then the Lamb comes forth to claim his rights to what he has redeemed. And that's all creation. The earth and everything belongs to him. He has redeemed it with his own blood. And when he come forth to take this book to open it, well, uh, my, it was, John didn't weep anymore. And he looked at this Lamb was a slain Lamb. It was already been killed. But it was alive again. And now we found out that a slain lamb is a bloody lamb. Bleeding all over. It's been slain. And if it had been slain, it had raised again or set him on the throne. Say so back in behind the throne like this, uh, interceding for all those souls that would come. Then when the last one was here and was completed, uh, God still held the book of redemption. See? Now, he's just doing the kinsman work now, like Boaz went down and Ruth was just sitting there waiting until Boaz, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Boaz done the re kinsman redeeming work. You remember me preaching that not long ago? Ruth, the gleaning, and Ruth 
of whatever she did and all down and the last name was Ruth Wade. Remember how I typed that in the church? While Boaz goes down to do the kinsman redeeming work. He did it. Kicked off his shoe and made a testimony and redeemed Neoma and through there got, got Ruth. Now, so Ruth was just waiting because she had already labored. She had done all these other things, but she was waiting. Now, and then when the church is waiting, resting, many of them, most of them, in the dust of the earth. While he's doing his kids on the redeem work. Now, the world's still going worse than sin is heaping up and, and sickness and trouble and death and sorrow. The godless man and godless women die right down tantrums and up everything else. Well, they can't appropriate enough faith to reach out there and take a hold of it. Now, notice. But then, after it was all over, after his, uh, his interceding was done, he comes forth, takes the book out of the hand of him, and then John and everything in heaven and begin, the souls on the altar begin screaming. We get that in the sixth seal again. And how they rejoiced and and they fell down, the elders and poured out the prayers of saints, and the soldier of the altar cried, Worthy art you, because you have redeemed us to God, and we are going back to earth to live as kings and priests. All there was a great. And the, John said, Everybody in heaven, everything beneath the earth, and everything, you're him praising God about it. John looked about his name on there, you know, all that time. Then, he said, He is worthy to take the book of redemption. Now, it doesn't belong back to the judge anymore. It belongs to the Redeemer. And he's done, he's done the work of redemption. Now he's going to show the church what he's done. <laughs> that he just takes, but the book is closed. No one knows it all. They know it was a book of redemption right there, but it's to be revealed in the last days, according to Revelation 10, the seventh angel is going to be given the message of that. Because it said that in the time of the sounding of the seventh church age, the seventh angel, when he sounds, all the mysteries of God should be finished up by his sounding. Amen. Then after it's revealed, the angel come down from heaven, which is Christ. I remember this angel is on earth, a messenger. Amen. Now comes Christ, you see, in the 10th chapter of Revelation, puts one foot upon the land, heaven on the sea, rainbow over his head, eyes and like, uh, feet like fire and so forth, raises up his hand and it swears by him that there is forever and ever on the throne that time shall be no more. And when he takes his oath, seven thunders utter their voices. And the writer, which when John was taking that, was supposed to write what he saw. He started to write down, he said, don't write it. Because, don't write that. It is an Un, he said, seal it up. What in? Seal it up. Don't say it. See, it's to be revealed. Amen. But it's not even written in the Word. And then when he began to open the seals, we find out they were all puzzling. Amen. When he opened the first seal, he thought, I hear this going to say, and it will come that so and so will take the throne and certain do this and this will do that. But wait, wait, here he's one of them. Why are riding? And the rider on them. Well, he had a boy in his hand and he was given a crown after a while, I said. That's all. And the lamb turned back again, pulled another seal off, and he a while back, a red horse rider. And he had a, given a, a sword, and he was going to make war and give it great power and take peace from the earth and kill one another. That was kind of a still mysterious thing, wasn't it, when he opened it up? And then, goes on and said, in the day just before these seven thunders, all the mysteries here are revealed. Amen. Now look, then we find out, as we've been studying, that now through the ages, we've had reformers, not prophets, Amen. reformers. And each office carries its own, its own word. It's like a man that's a a telephone operator, he is an, exactly an electrician. Uh, he might do a little job at it. Like if a man is a lineman, well, he's certainly, uh, a man's a postal digger, never did 
uh, do any line work, you better keep off the line. But he might do a little patch up work or something. But when the real thing is to be revealed at the last stage of the last part of the church, is when God has said that he would send to us according to the scriptures, and we've searched it through and through, that he predicted that the spirit of Elijah would return in some person. Amen. Now, I think that's been made just as clear, and, we, and, and we're looking for that to happen. Somewhere, an anointed person in the last days to rise up. Now, you don't hear a lot of fanatics and everything else, but that is, is trying to, it's the devil trying to take away the real one. Yes. But it'll be properly identified. You know what Elijah was. Watch that. You, you know. And then when he, now he left the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Not the others. Yeah. They sure won't do it. They'll miss it a million miles away. We've been through all that short. How they miss John. How they miss Elijah. How they miss Jesus. How they miss them all the way along. And they'll do the same thing. Because the Bible said they would. So then, at that time, it'll be very humble. It'll be so simple. I don't want to make people fall away from it. It's too simple for them. We find out. And always when people get smart and educated and know a whole lot, then they just, that's just kind of business. Yeah. Jesus never took them kind of people for being his disciples. He took unlearned people, fishermen. Nobody's connected with their churches and then He just got ordinary men, tax collectors and farmers and fishers and so forth to do his work. Because they, they know they're nothing, then he can make something out of it. As long as they keep knowing they're nothing, then God can work. But when they get to thinking they look something, then you don't know nothing that you are know about. <laughs> and then we, we find that. And now we find out then that these mysteries are supposed to be revealed. And why didn't these other men, Wesley, Luther, and those great reformers who brought out justification and sanctification, the Pentecostal age of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they, why didn't they catch these, these messages? Why didn't they get them? Because they were reformers. Okay? It's like, take it on the other side, there was people come in who was, uh, uh, had power as kings, but wasn't kings. Right. You have to notice the Bible terminology of anything. Now, watch. But this, the reason that all the straying ends of the mysterious part about uh, uh, justification, the mysterious part of sanctification, the mysterious part of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And why, uh, what kind did, uh, did Eve eat an apple or did she eat a pomegranate or something, see? Did, uh, uh, what was the serpent seed? And uh, is the baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost or the name of the Lord Jesus right? And all uh, hundreds of those things have been let loose ended. Yeah. And then in the last hour, this fellow is to come on and reveal the thing. Take up the scriptures to be properly identified. Yes, sir. And that won't be a great big thing now. It looks like here the Bible would be something big. How much bigger was it when John was supposed to come down there and baptize? Just think now, the prophets back all the way back, Isaiah, Malachi, all of them spoke of him. When he would come, and when he did, just a lone, old, uneducated fellow with whiskers all over his face and hair sticking out like a fuzzy worm and a big old piece of sheepskin or grit grain, no education at all, never went to school in his life as far as we know. Here he come out of the woods, not even as much as welcomed into a pulpit. And stood out there on a river of Jordan and began to call for people to repent. Could you imagine? The Bible said that everything will be so great that day, even though all the high places will be made low. Yeah. And all the low places will be brought up. Yeah. Yes, sir. And all the rough places will be made plain. Yeah. Well, I can imagine seeing how they think John will come out of this great forerunner of Christ and just take all the desert and smooth it out and put it in grass again. See? Oh, they I imagine they had it all fixed up like they had today. Yeah. But it was so humble, even the apostles missed it. Yeah. They said, well, what does the scripture say? If the spear going up there be offered up now, why does the scripture say that and Elias must come first? He said, he's already coming. You didn't know it. Amen. And some man did do the same thing. But John, he said, did just what was listed for him to do. And they done to him just what they're supposed to do. And said, so was the son of man. He suffered. While there was, I guess, one third of the whole Jewish 
twice ever know that Jesus Christ was on earth. They might have heard some fanatic down on there somewhere, but they didn't pay attention to what on. He came to his own, and his own received him not. Now that's where I believe, even, I didn't say he'd secretly come, but the rapture will be a secret. Amen. So if that was so secret when he come, how much more will the rapture be unknown? I want to directly say, well, I thought we're supposed to have a rapture all this judgment up on the earth. He said, it's already taken place, and he didn't know it. It'll be so, just like a thief of the night. Like a, a book I read from him, what is that called? Uh, Romeo and Juliet, is that what it was? That's something he left the guy land upside down so we have a long time ago. And come God, he's uh, did he get it out at night time. Now, that's the way that it'll uh, it'll take place. And it'll be gone out there like I sent a bunch of angels down with the spades and dig up the graves. The Bible said we'll be changed before even you could bat your eye, just a twinkle. It won't be over. Very right, quick. Just say somebody disappeared. Well, I'd imagine if we could search the world over today, there have been 500 people disappear off the earth each day. Yeah. And they're running them out. They just come up disappearing. Well, there ain't going to be too many going that direction. Now, I don't want to scare you. I, 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 I don't think it's that way, but I just want to tell you what he said. And you know it yourself. As it was in the days of Noah, wherein eight souls were saved by water. Amen. Eight souls out of the world. Be saved by water. What do you say? Oh, my. Uh, no need to try. That shows you haven't got the kind of faith you need. Yeah. If it's just going to be one, that'll be me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I believe. That's what you want to be. Be me. I want to live so close to him. I know he's going to take me when he comes. I believe it. Yeah. So I'll do it. If everybody else did, I'm going to be there. By his grace, because he promised me that. And I know I, I'll be there. Because he can't lie, and I know my soul, and life bears record, I try to live daily just like he was coming, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to be that one. That's what he wants to do. If he's going to be eight, I'll be one of that eight. If he's going to be 500, I'm going to be one of that 500. Or what about the other fellow, but I want to be one of that 500. That's what you want to remember. And if you don't remember like that, there's something wrong with your faith. You're not sure you're saved yet, then. You're just guessing at it. Do that. All right, we even get in to see all right. All right. I want each night, I don't know whether you might be taking up your time, we can get out a little bit earlier. There's an opportunity in the redeeming of these of these seals. Remember, it's only really one verse. The first tells the announcing of it. The second verse. Most all commentaries and so forth, the reading of their are re a reading of the, their thoughts, and I have and I've always believed, like nearly all of them does, that that first horse rider was the was the early church. But when the Holy Spirit revealed it, it was absolutely contrary to that. And so then all it does is show what it is, and then I try. Now, to me, this is very sacred. That's the reason I'd rather answer these questions and let's get everybody knowing straight and on tapes too, that they'll understand now. See, I tried to speak a while at night on backgrounding to get the people rushing in and pushing in. And you shouldn't do that. Right? But when it does, it's human beings. And it's hot and in here and you... And you uh, restless, but you've been very, very nice. The best I've ever seen the people act in the tabernacle been this week. And the setting quiet, and mothers take their babies to the nursery room and start crying, and everything's been very nice. But I tried to background it until I just feel the anointing of the Spirit on me to say these words, to say what has been revealed to me. And then, if I'm somewhere doing that, if I have made a mistake, you're surely here before all the people, you'll correct it for me. I want it, it's, it's, I want it right. There's no need to take me just what you imagine. There's something right. And, and we want that. We want God to give us what's right. 
Amen. So now, we took this, these riders as they come up the first horse. Now, uh, and we realized that that was uh, the Antichrist that went forth. And then we find out last night that the same fella that went forth as Antichrist as a white horse, we found him with a sword last night. Riding and killing people. Now, now, it's always the natural and the spiritual. And for the church sake, I want to tie this before we get to the opening of this seal. Which one? He gave me. I got rolled down here. I got several scriptures here, several pages of it. And as I refer to it, uh, notice. I want to give a type of the church and make it so plain that you'll be bound to see. It, see. Now there was a natural bride in the Garden of Eden. Remember last night? That natural bride, she was Adam's sweetheart, not yet his wife. Because he had knew her yet as a wife. Just like Mary was Joseph's wife, but he never knew her yet. She was found with a child. See? Now, before Adam knew his wife, she was just a bride to him. Alright? And we find out that uh, God, she, she fell in the Garden of Eden because she failed to hold to God's Word. Now, he knew that Satan would be loose among them, so he gave them uh, a place to stay behind, fortify them. Well, who could know any better place to be fortified than God if he's trying to take care of his own children? If I want to take care of my little Joseph, a brother, everything, and I know his life depended on it, what? And I was able to do it? Well, a 40 foot concrete reinforced would, would be the thing with good. That's a, I think it at 90 foot. No, no. To be sure that, and if I can think that about my little boy, which if his mortal life were lost, I believe a child would be saved. How much more to God, to his child, that would be eternally lost? My God. What should he place him behind? He placed him behind his own word. As long as you're in that word, you're safe. If you find me and my words in you, then just ask what you will. That's it, the word. So, Eve got the strolling in the garden and she ran into the serpent, a very polished up sort of a fella. And, she, and he began, now he was on the other side. God lives, dwells, works in humility. Never any other way. Now, the little humble lady walking along there, and Satan come up as a wild, sick, polished son of a villa, and he wanted to sell her the program as long as, no matter how much Satan was around, as long as she stayed behind this word, she was all right. So let Satan do whatever he wants to. You stay at the word. Amen. Don't make a bit of difference. If he says, "Why well, you're sick, by his Christ will heal. Amen. Well, you're going to die. You're raising up again. Amen. They just stay behind the word. That's all. Christ retreated to the word himself. It's written. Amen. Now, stay behind the word. But Eve, she began to kind of let down. But she never let it all down. She only let one little phrase down. And that's what Sick Warner knew. He got it from behind God's promise by reasoning. Don't never try to reason God's word. Just believe it. Amen. So she stepped out from there, and before Adam ever got to her for a wife, she was already defiled by Satan. And she and did you notice Christ did the same thing? Exactly. Now, for redeeming, God had to be there first. And did you notice? Mary, before she would come to Joseph, the Holy Spirit had got there. <laughs> That's where the Redeemer comes. Now, now notice, the natural woman fell, and God made a way for her to be redeemed. Although she had fallen, He made a way. Now, that was the first bride on earth fell before her husband and her were married. She fell by, by the reason of, of reasoning instead of staying with the word, she
she fell. And she fell to death. Eternal separation. With her, she took her husband and everything else who was on the earth. She fell. Now, but God, full of mercy, made a way to redeem that woman. And now he promised her, telling her that sometime in the future, the true word would come to her again. The true word would be made known to her. I remember that because he promised Christ through the woman. And Christ is the word. St. John 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. See? And dwelt with us. God dwelt with us in flesh. He was the Word. Before a Word, it's a thought. Yes. And a thought has to be created. Alright, so God's thoughts become creation when it was spoke by a Word. That's when He presents it to, to you as a thought, is thought, and it's revealed to you that it's still a thought until you speak it. That's the reason Moses went out to pray and a pillar of fire ran him, and he said, go on Hold your stick towards the east as they call for flies. There's no flies. But he went and held the stick there and said, let there be flies. No flies at all yet. Went on back. But in other words, God's thought has already been spoken. It's a word. Now it's got to happen. Now, don't you see what Jesus said? If you say to this mountain, not if I say it, but you say to this mountain, be moved. And the first thing I guess most is not the old green cloud getting the bus, and after a while it was five pounds per yard. Where did he come from? God created him. Don't you see how God can destroy this world tonight with the gnats if he wants to? Well, he can pile gnats from the moon. There would be gnats to the moon. That'd be all it would be good. No chemicals, nothing. They just keep on growing, 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 and on. He can do what he wants to. He's God. The Creator. All they can do is speak it. That's right. He's the Creator. Now, if we just get to realize that how great he is, he just does what he wishes. He says, I love the people. And these little educators, smart mountain, there's no God and everything. <laughs> but it, it, just like it was at Babel again. Babel. Now, we notice that God told Eve that after so long a time, the word's coming back to you. Now, how did she fall off? But I have to say it. What did she fall from? What did Eve fall from? The word. Is that right? Yeah. The word. Right. And God said he'd make a way to redeem her back to the word again. Yeah. All right. After so long a time, the word would be known to her. All right. Glory. The word would come for one purpose. Now hold tight now. I want to say the word would come to her for one purpose. That was for redemption. Yes, All right. But until, until then, she had a substitute that would, uh, that would work until the time arrived for the original word. Are you, you understand clearly? See, he told her the word would come to her again. But until that time, he gave her a substitute until that time around. So he gave her an uh, offering to make a substitute for that blood. Now the blood was of bulls and sheep and goats and things. But it didn't take away her sin. See? It only covered her sin. It didn't take it away at all. It covered it. For it was an animal's blood, and in an animal's blood is animal life. It was a substitute until the real, uh, get your coats on, the real human blood as human beings would be, become incarnate. God! Without sex, virgin. The virgin first produced that. Now, God's word Promise became blood and was incarnated in the person of Jesus Christ the Savior. The blood of bulls and goats and so forth. But now wait, here God made the promise. Sin would be there when it comes. Her seed should bruise the serpent's head. 
Now, if the first seed comes like from Adam, or like that bit the serpent and so forth, then it still be sinful seed. That's the reason John wept. There's no man who called nobody. Everybody's crossed on the side of the ditch, the desert. But there's coming a time that when this substitute blood of animals would be done away with, when the real incarnate blood came, God made flesh and blood. The Bible said he was. First Timothy 3.16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of God, is for God was manifested in flesh. Yeah. That's right. The uh, virgin birth did this. Now the blood of sheep and goats covered sin, but didn't get rid of it. Or it was the animal's blood, but it was to be alright, but to be a substitute, and they sure got, uh, got used to that substitute. And so they just kept on. And when the real promised word was made manifest in Jesus Christ, who proved to be the son of the great creator God, and was vindicated himself by being the living word of God. Yeah. <laughs> he proved he was. Yeah. He could speak things into existence. Yeah. There ain't a human being or or nothing the world can do. There's a thing on earth can create but God. Amen. The devil can't create. Amen. He's a perverter of what's been created, but he can't create. Amen. Sin is only righteousness perverted. You know what I mean? What is a lie? It's the truth misrepresented. See? What is an adultery? The right the legal act? Uh, perverted. Everything in sin, sin is just uh, the truth perverted. Now, he could not create, but when Christ came, proved he was the creator. Amen. There was the blood that had been promised. Now, if you want to read that, you let's just turn for a minute. We go take our time and have all this taken out there. I, I makes me nervous. I think everybody wants to go home, you know. Oh, no. so, so. Now let's get Acts 2. Thank you. And we'll just Acts 2, and we'll find out where this is right now. Whether he was proved that he was God. Uh, no. get Acts 2, now let's get here at the 22nd verse. Peter speaking the day of Pentecost. Ye man of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did by him. In the midst of you, as you, you're all, you yourselves also know. A man that was approved that it was God among you. By the very things he'd done, proved that he was. Here's Peter standing at the Sanhedrin telling them. Nicodemus knows the same. He said, right on, we all know that you're a teacher comes from God. Because no man could do these things, but he comes from God. <laughs> They know it. But why? For what? Now, Eve was promised this. But when that bride come on down and refused when the real word came to her, so the woman refused to recognize the Hebrew bride. For she was the bride of, of God. He put her away in divorcement. Is that right? Yeah. She was a bride of God. Well, he was never married yet. That's right. But Joseph put Mary away before he was going to put Mary away before this marriage. See? He was engaged to her. And when he come, and the word that he promised come for the wedding, he found her wrapped in her substitutes so bad that she wouldn't take the real promise that had been made, the word, Christ. Maybe you don't get it. Let me go over again. I want you to get this. Okay? She was promised the bride, Eve, to be a redeemer. A redeemer would be the word. And when the word came made flesh, she rejected it. She was given substitutes, a one substitute, given substitutes to go on until the Redeemer come, and when the Redeemer comes, she wanted to continue with her substitute and rejected the true word. Yeah. 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 That was the Hebrew God. So did he by the second Eve, right? The mother of all spiritual living. See? Eve means the mother of all as spirit, all is living. Eve, mother of all is living. Now, and when he came to the Hebrew 
through life, she was the mother of all that was living. But she rejected it. Natural Eve fell in Eden by listening to Satan's reasoning against God's word. That's how she fell. All right, sir. She fell because she did that. Spiritual Eve. Now, that's the church. Christ. Right. She fell not in Eden, but in Rome. You see? At the Nicaea Council, when she rejected that Pentecostal church that went down to Nicaea and listening to Romans reasoning, instead of holding on to the word, she fell and everything but away from her died with her. Now, just as natural Eve fell, spiritual Eve fell. God's bride fell in the garden. Christ's bride fell in Rome. See? Notice. By the same reasoning against God's word. She also forfeited her rights of virtue to Satan, which we found in the breaking of these seals, that that was Satan and still is Satan there. The Bible says it's the very seed of Satan. And as Eve forfeited her virtuous rights and given them over to Satan in the Garden of Eden, the church, the bride of Christ, did the same thing at Rome when they forfeited the Bible for their dogmas and reasoning. Yeah. See that types? Yeah. You just know those types you're bound to come out, right? If my hand looks like if I've ever seen myself and I see my shadow coming, I know just about what it looks like. See? But that's where if you want to see what's coming, look what has been. For the, all the old things were shadows of things to come, the Bible says. Yes. All right. For she forfeited her virtuous word, the word of God, when she sold the Bible and put a man in there that says that the church has rights to change anything they want to change. And they're done. And the bride of Christ, the Pentecostal bride, sold out her virtue and now see it just as Eve sold her virtue to Satan in the Garden of Eden. Exactly. All right. God has promised this church, this Pentecostal church, knowing she would do it like he did it, Eve. God has promised the Pentecostal church. Do you believe that she sold her birth rights before I, uh, her virtue when she left over there? Do you believe that? Yes. She sure she did. Yeah. Then what good is a creed? Not based on this Bible. How will somebody find what's called the Apostles' Creed or even one word of it in the Bible? That's a Catholic creed, not an Apostles' Creed. Read Acts 238, that's Apostles' Creed. <laughs> now, that's what the years don't mind anyhow. So if you see, so they sold out the birth rights. Not only that, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostals, the rest of them's done the same. She formed a denomination. Rome what made her do that? She formed a denomination and put man at the head of it. And the Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostals, and everyone's done the same thing, put a group of man at the head of it. No matter what God says, hey, you have to do it the way they say to it. But what is it? It's nothing in the world but spiritual prostitution. Amen. Wrong type of woman. That's her. Creeds. Fine creeds. Man made. Then she became, when she did that, now I'll prove this, she became a whore to God. You believe the Bible says that? Yes, sir. Her daughters has done the same. Now in Revelation 17, you're going to mark it down. John was taken in the spirit and saw a great horror sitting up on him. He read it last night, and there was the seven hills and exactly what she'd done. And she had given the world her filthy fornications. The night, and all the kings of the earth committed fornications with her. Cheating, stealing, lying, paying for repentance and, and obedience and every other thing. Well, I remember she had daughters. Well, if she become a body and out of an organizational system, then the whole system's wrong. Amen. Amen. If Eve disobeying God threw everything into death that was under and ever 
a church that organizes and throws everything that they have under. That's right. Exactly. The whole thing's gone. That's exactly according to the word here. Read Revelation 17. And the Bible said that he would burn hell with fire and all our children with it. Exactly the way God said it. 
Spirit come, she had to figure it out some other way. Amen. I'm talking about the bride, the Jewish bride, the Hebrew bride. That was Eve to begin with. Now when we come out here, she didn't want it. She wants to stay with her stuff in here. Now God promised spiritual Eve. Yes. At Pentecost. Told that Eve before it happened. 400 years before the church ever fell. That they would fall away. Amen. And they would do what they'd done. Amen. But he promised in the last days, he'd send the word again. Amen. Jesus spoke the same thing when he was on earth. Amen. He was saying it again. And what is, what will it find? It'll find the same thing that it found when it come first. Yeah. Right. They've got saved. They want their seven years. They want their denomination. Yeah. They want their creeds. Yeah. They want to live this way they want to. They want, well, I'm so-and-so. I belong to so-and-so. I'll make you know what God's doing, how much he manifests himself. He could raise the dead. He could tell the secrets of the hearts. He could do everything that the Bible said he would do. That don't make a bit of difference. If they come back to my organization, there's nothing to it. Amen. Same thing that Hebrew right. pride did. That's right. They, they listened to their substitute, and God promised them the real. Amen. And when the real come, they didn't want it. It was too humble. Amen. That's the same thing today. Amen. When, when it rises on the scene, now God said in Malachi 4 that He would send the message in the last days that would restore us. Amen. Amen. Joel said, I will restore Amen. all the years. Amen. Everything that rolled me up, everything that happened to see up, everything the bad to see up, all that original Pentecostal grace, God said, I Amen. will restore it. a person that will be the only thing that God ever sent his word to was a prophet. Yeah, yeah. Not to reformers, to prophets. Yeah. It wasn't the hour for it. Now it's they get to be the hour. That's what you've been watching for it to come. Yeah. It'll be so humble and gentle and so, oh my, you think them aristocratic Methodist, Baptist, and Presbyterian Pentecostals will ever receive it? What do you say, Pentecostals? The Pentecostals is the Lady of Sins. Yeah. Yeah. Rich and I have need of nothing. It said you don't know that you're poor. Might be building millions of dollars building, but you're still poor. Yeah. Spiritual poor. Yeah. Oh, you say, I see it all. You're blind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you say, bless God, I'm covered. Naked. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm sure a lot of boys, we got sinners, we... I don't know. <laughs> no, that's just vice versa. Now, if the Bible said that the lady of sin church would be in that condition, and there's no person on earth could deny that this is the last age, because the lady of sin church age or the seventh church age, and here we are. The second 2,000 years is finishing. There's no more church ages. That's the reason you let her leave, brother, could start another organization, but we don't. Yeah. It's at the end. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Exactly. The disciples in John 17, 17 were sanctified and given power to cast out devils. Still didn't have the Holy Ghost. Right. Right. And go up to Pentecost and wait for the Holy Ghost to come. That's where Judas showed his color. See how that spirit worked its way through justification and sanctification? But when it comes to the end, he showed his color. That's right. Now notice. Now, here we are at the end time. And spiritual Eve, just as natural as Hebrew Eve, was promised, the Hebrew bride was promised the word to return. And the spiritual bride from Pentecost, when she fell at Nicaea, then she's promised in the last days that the word will come again. Now you see, then to go into the scripture, take over here, Revelations 10. And said, in the hour, the time of the, the last angel, the seventh angel, Seventh messenger Amen. begins to sound the mystery of God is finished. Amen. The restoration back to the Word. Amen. The Bible said that this messenger of the last days would be restored them back to the original faith again. Amen. Back to the faith of the Father. But you think they received it? No, sir. Last days, he would restore the original Word again that is sitting out God for but uh, and she had forfeited. Now she forfeited that word at Nicaea. Eve forfeited it in Eden. Eve. Eve rejected hers at Calvary. And Nicaea's group is rejecting it in the last day. It's the same. Huh. But when the word came in human flesh, she, Eve, the Hebrew church, Mother of all spiritual living at then, she rejected it. She was so dead in her traditions and dogmas that she missed it. So is this one. Amen. Amen. All right. They miss him, the living word, manifested in the flesh by the word that is promised. Amen. The word promised to do these things. The promise was made that it will be like this in the last days. Amen. As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. I watch what happened to Sodom. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. Watch what happened then. See? Now it's going to be the same thing. And we're living that day. So there could be, I guess, like you get 600 promises of them like that. Now the scripture is referring to it. See? Now, but they rejected. She held to her traditions and substitute instead of the the she held to the substitute blood instead of the real blood. Uh, Jesus, the Word, said, uh, when it was manifested to her, because she held to these traditions, Jesus, the manifested Word, said to the bride, Hebrew bride, because you hold to your traditions. You make the word of God without any effect to you. Amen. It can't be effective. Now that's what's happening today that the, the revivals that we're supposed to have, we have denominational revivals, we haven't had a real stir. No, no. Oh, sir. I don't think we got revivals. We haven't. Oh, they've got millions and millions and millions of church members, but not a revival no more. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, the bride hasn't had a revival yet. Uh, there's been no revival there, no manifestation of God to stir the bride yet. We're looking for it. It'll take those seven unknown thunders back there to wake her up. He'll send it, he promised it. Uh, boy. Now, she was, she was dead. And now, if the churches would forget their creeds and forget their dogmas, and just take the Bible, plead the promise, then we come effective to it. But see, Jesus said, you and your traditions make the Word of God not effective to you. Well, that's the same thing today with spiritual Eve. See, the spiritual bride of today, so-called the church, she takes the Word of God and she won't accept it and she accepts dogmas instead. Therefore, the Word's not effective to her. Because she tries to inject her creed with the word. Yeah. And it will work. Now, what we need today, 
I mean, just keep reading that your herald is coming across the headlines. We need a prophet to return. We need a prophet to return. And I guess when he does return, I'll know nothing about it. It's always been that way. We need it. Everything you talked about, we need a prophet to return who will bring the word of the Lord. Fearless. We be the Bible promising. Uh, uh, no brother, brother Moore, now keep this house and everything else. Uh, the editor, he's the finest man that, that, that walks and shoots there, area. Yeah, on the finest one. But it, see, he knows that we got to have that. And Sister Moore, one of the finest women, little poor little fellows, they sacrificed, and that's one of the best papers on the field, in my opinion. And the herald is coming. But you find out, they keep glancing at we need a prophet. We need a prophet. See? Ah, that's what they talk about. Oh. And then, what are they are today and like yesterday and today, announcing on the radio that in the Baptist churches and so forth, that we're not to take in with the Catholics, but we're to kind of fellowship with them. Yeah. Hey? And like you know, the message going out loud here, stay away from that poison. Yeah. Yeah. How could you walk together and say be agreed? Light and dark can fellowship together. When light comes in, dark goes out. Okay, the most powerful, you can't put light out with dark. You, but you can put dark out with light. That's right. And he is the light and he is the word. Right yeah. straight back, you can't make it light out. If you're anything wrong, it comes right straight back to the spot again. Yes, Just like some guys start trying to fuss with you. If you know where to stand, know what he believes, it's just like taking a rabbit and turning loose in a pen. And you got every hole stopped up. You stand at the gate. He's got to come back. <laughs> he's got to come right back to the gate again. Well, that's all we can get out. Yeah. He'll stick his hip to you here and almost break his neck. Go over there where he's stand watching. And he'll come right back.
proved that, that what he was doing, he was he had done exactly. He, he said to them, he said, Oh, you Capernaum, who is exalted in the heaven, if the works had been, the mighty works had been done in Sodom, that's been done and you would be standing today. Amen. Right. And, and in Capernaum, he never remember to heal a few people and told them the secrets of their hearts and walked out. Amen. That's all. See, they don't know what mighty works are. They think it has to be a great big program where everybody gets up, the judge makes a speech, and, and the band's playing, the colors flying, and, and the well-dressed uh, women uh, uh, carrying all the PhD LLDs, the big tall hats and turned around collars, and everything they all have to walk in. That's something great. God said that's foolish. Amen. <laughs> and he brings up a little something. I don't know what difference between maybe uh, <laughs> ABC's Harley and perform something that just sets the real church apart and the rest of us are much older. Amen. Amen. God calls that great and the world calls it foolish. Amen. The world calls that great, God calls that foolish. Amen. Amen. It's just vice versa. Amen. And the thing that God has promised, God will and has done. Amen. Here we are. Now, Still, she remains as she did the Hebrew Eve. She just wouldn't do it. You could raise up the dead. You could see the Spirit of God. Jesus came down, vindicated himself to be the Son of God. First he started preaching. Well, they thought, well, kind of odd like fella. Uh, who is he anyhow? Well, the first thing the old people can say, of course they said before when his forerunner come, John, they said, are you the Messiah? said, no. But he's standing among you somewhere. See, what? He know when his message taking place. What he was to do. Amen. He know what he was going to do. Just like Noah kept watching Enoch. When Enoch went, Noah said, bring it close to y'all. The time is at hand. Noah kept watching Enoch. See? And John watched for the sign that Jesus told him, or God told him to watch. He said, he's standing on you now, somewhere among you. I don't know him, but I will know him. He said, well, aren't you the Messiah that we were sent from the headquarters? He said, the, the elders and all of us down here, if you're the Messiah, why don't you come up and make yourself come up there? Not down here, there's a bunch of stuff down here. You come up there and make yourself known. He said, I'm not the Messiah. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. That way it's more than it is if you go home. They didn't know what And yet there's all of them going to come. But it could be a guy like that. Oh my, that would be terrible. What school are you from? None. Have you got your fellowship card? What is it? <laughs> he was anointed of God. Yeah. And then one day I have the axe laid to the root of the tree. Yeah. Now, that's all, he, that's all he had. He talked in terms of a woodsman, not the terms of a clergyman. I was axes and trees and so forth. He didn't talk in ecclesiastical terms, but Jesus said there never was a prophet like him. Never a man born of a woman like him will he say. Right. He was more than a prophet. He was a messenger of the covenant. He stood up between the, the, the two dispensations coming in. See? More than a prophet. And so then, um, then uh, they didn't know him. They didn't understand him. He was kind of an odd-like sort of fellow. So they dismissed him, see? And um, would Jesus come then? And surely one would accept him, this carpenter's boy, there was nothing like that, with a black lead behind him, the ill chin. Even then we would see a fellow like that. But, uh, but look what God did. He took the unlearned, poor, fishermen, woodsmen, farmers, and harlots, Amen. And let the dignitary sit there. Amen. Why? Why did he do it? Why did he do such a thing? Could you imagine? Because that them people recognize him to be the word. Now let's just watch it just a minute. Here's an old ignorant fisherman. Can't write his name. The Bible says he was ignorant and unlearned. He brings his fish up and sets it down. Go down there and see what all this noise is about. But way down deep in him, he knew that the Bible said that the Messiah, all Hebrews, looked for the Messiah. Because there was to be a scriptural thing happen 
when he comes. Amen. There's been a lot of signs raised up that said, I'm healed, let them off of the hundreds and, and the parish and everything. Amen. But see, that was a throw off the real one when he comes. Amen. We've had Elijah's mantles and coats and every other thing, but that, that's, that's, that's just a throw off the real thing when he does come. Amen. Right? All kinds of people that's wore the girls and the garments and been buried in all kinds of hoods turned around and everything else. Now go, now that is what it indicates like a bogus dollar shows there's a good one somewhere and he's fine. Amen. So here they come. Now, these dignitaries come out, they were so on their substitute. When uh, they said now that the Messiah comes, he will certainly come to Kiev and says he'll come to our denomination. He'll come to the Pharisees, the Sadducees. That's what you think he'll come to the Sadducees. There he was. See the same thing that happened today. Yeah. Now, but when he come, it was strange. He would come all oh, very contrary to what they thought, but he come according to the word. Yeah. And they didn't know the word. Yeah. Let me say that real so you it'll sink way down. I want this to get it. That's what's the matter with you today. And you don't know the word. Jesus said you discern the face of the skies, but the signs of time you can't discern. Said we Moses are said, you know Moses, you know me. Didn't know Moses, and therefore they didn't know. They just don't agree. Hatched out. Now, let's take this old fisherman. Sets his basket down. Puts his gray beard down. Walks down here, let's see who it is. Brother said, come on, let's go down here. That's the same God said, God, he said the other day, I stayed all night with you last night. You know, John, I was talking about, yeah, that wild man down there, yeah, I heard about him. What a, uh, old Simon, he goes, I heard about him down there, yeah, I've been out there two or three months ago down there, yeah. What he said, and one day he was standing there, he said, oh, I think, he said, you know, here he comes right now. He said, how do you know? Look to where he said, oh, here's a fellow standing there. He said, I see the Spirit of God like a dove coming down. Amen. I hear a voice saying, this is him. Amen. This is my beloved Son, Amen. in whom I am pleased to dwell in. Amen. Amen. Then he walked out of the water and baptized him, and so forth. Well, there, he said, he knew him. Oh, the Lord Simon said, I've heard all that long to pass. Here he comes up, and down in his heart was a predestinated seed. Amen. Amen. Jesus said so. Amen. Right. Walks up to him, walks up to him, walks up to him, walks up to walks up there, Jesus standing there, just an ordinary little fellow, walks up and says, well, your name is Simon, Amen. and your father's name is Jonas. <laughs> that explained to me, wow, that little eternal life seed he struck in there. <laughs>
deep was on the earth when God moved the water away and the sun hit it to come up. And so it came with sun. The life. And then when the Holy Spirit in him moved away her past life and showed it to her. That light struck and she said, Sir, I perceive you're a prophet. She said, oh, We know, I know it, that when Messiah comes, that's what he's going to be. And we ain't had a prophet for hundreds of years. We have never had a true prophet for hundreds of years. And she said, How are you tell me about my husband and told me how many he had and so forth? Well, I said, I don't understand this. Said, when Messiah comes up, well, he's going to do that, but who are you? And I me. And the priest looked around and said, well, they have to answer the congregation. He said, don't fool that fellow. He's, he's possessed of a devil. But that's the difference. That's the same thing today. It's just exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so she, she knew it because the light struck it. They then fishermen, woodsmen, farmers, tax collectors, harlots, they see in him what the simple scripture said he would do. Yes. And the Pharisees couldn't see because of their tradition. Yes. They couldn't see because of their tradition, but the prostitutes, the farmers, and all them, they saw it. All that was predestinated. When the doubts rolled away, the sea went to grow. That's right. What did she do? She said, well, I'm glad I got to the song. <laughs> right into the city, she, went, she forgot about the water. She said, come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very thing that the scripture says the signs were to do? Isn't this exactly that? And the people could see that same thing that Jesus Christ said in St. John 14, 12. It would happen again. He said it also in Luke when he says it was the days of Noah how God manifested himself and a man had told who was behind him what uh, Sarah did laughing in the pit and all these scriptures of Malachi and so forth predicted in the last days. Hebrews 4 said when the word comes back now God four said it would return back. Yeah. The Hebrews four said the word of God discerned yeah. the thoughts that's in the heart, yeah. and they can see it done and walk right away from it. Their traditions hide it, makes it not a thing. Well, we're just here. That's all. <laughs> you know, he could do the same thing today. He'd come out on the scene and produce the same things he did then as he said he would. He, he promised to do it. He promised to do it. And if he would do the same thing, the lady of Sia messenger is supposed to do it. And then if the lady of Sia church sees it done, they'll do just exactly like the Hebrew church did. No matter how well vindicated it is, oh, it do the end. Oh, my. I said that we would return to the original word and be made manifest in his promise to restore again the faith, original faith again. And if he made himself known that he was dwelling amongst his people by doing these things, he could even have his picture taken. Scientifically proven. And still they obey. <laughs> saying yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13, 8, to show that it's scientific in every other way. Scientifically, in the spiritual realms, in every way it could be vindicated, it's been vindicated, and you know, they'd probably do the same thing. They'd probably just walk right away and do the same thing as they did. Oh, God help us. Uh, we just stop here. God help us to see now my prayer. As we come now, because I don't want to keep it too late, God help us to see 
I believe maybe the Spirit upon us to be right now that He'd help us to reveal, open up this scene. Hallelujah. That's right. As we see the state the church is in, we see where it has been, see what they did, and see where it was supposed to come, see it there, and then see what they're supposed to do. They did just that. Now, you see where we're at? You do the judgment. I can't judge. I'm just responsible for bringing this word. Just as it's given to me, I can give it. Until it's given to me, I can't give it. No one else can. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld his little black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A major of wheat for a penny, and three majors of barley for a penny. But see, thou art not the oil and wine. Now, the lamb's got the book in his hand. Breaking the seals. He broke the first one, second one, now he breaks the third. And as he breaks it, the lamb breaks it, the third seal, the third beast. Now, uh, how many of what the third beast looked like? Looks like a man. The first one looked like a lion, the other one looked like a calf or an ox, and the third one looked like a man. It was a man. And he heard the, the living creature, the, the beast, living creature like a man, said to John, Come see what it is. This mystery has been here all down through the years of redemption since the foundation of the world. It's been hid under the seal. What's going to happen? Now, come look what it is. And so he opens it up, a thunder blast, and the Lamb opens the seals. Now, and John walked up to see what it would be. What did he see? He seen a black horse. And his rider had a balance or scales in his hand. Amen. Now, that's the first thing he saw. When the lamb announced it, uh, broke the seal, then the other beast, the beast, were taking a turn out announcing, come see. And John, where he was standing, maybe like this, he walks over here, when the lamb opened it, walked over here, usually the thunder strikes as we see in the first seal, and he watches to see what takes place, and he sees a man coming first on a white horse. He watches him ride down. All down to John sees him come to the end. He sees him come down. He's a white horse, got a bow in his hand, and uh, the rider hat, and he has no arrows with it. The next thing he sees, he gets a crown, rides right on through. Then we find out that the light here comes again. He opens it over and looks. Now here comes a, a red horse. And this man has a sword in his hand. He rides right on down through the scriptures. He put his sword in his hand and was to kill and take peace from the earth. Now uh, the lamb holds another seal. Another one of the living creature like a man. Say, come see. Now he walks up to see what they see. And when he does, there comes a rider on a black horse. Now last night we found out that the same rider that rode the white horse was the same one on the red one. And the boy said, in the midst of these called out, you see, they're coming to see what it was. He was uh, in this living creature. And he saw this black horse. And when the boys in the midst of the four beasts called out a measure of wheat for a penny and, and uh, three measures of barley for a penny, but see it down, hurt not the, the oil and the wine. See? This, right, this, this goes him. If you notice, the first rider, who he was, and we found out last night scripturally that the second rider was exactly the same man, only he's on another horse. Amen. What happened? He changed his ministry. Amen. Amen. Right. We found out he was an antichrist. Amen. And he changed his position. We found out that when he first just was a white horse, he would come a doctrine. Now we're taking every one of these right back in the scripture. Now watch where we're at tonight at other church age now. We're coming down to the third church age now. This is exactly the third church age. This is exactly like the third horse. Now the first church age, what like? The Nicolaitans had a doctrine. See, this is the first one. All right? And then the first thing we know, this Nicolaitan doctrine, it becomes sanctioned and was right. 
went into action. And they crowned this fellow. Then this spirit and Christ become incarnate in a man. See? And we find out later on he becomes an incarnate devil too. The demon goes away, the devil comes in. And just as that church is, uh, that kind of antichrist church progresses, so has the bride come on. Amen. With different things, too. Just in case you're saying, Tisha Baptist, Holy Ghost, and Lutheran, I don't see Only they take their revival first, and the church is taken to life. Their first three years, the first three stages of them, and went to the dark age, then the third three stages come to church. Amen. But just in case you're saying, Tisha Baptist, Holy Ghost, and Incarnate God, they can have the other. Here he comes in as the Antichrist, as the false prophet, then the beast, then the dark age. And the church comes out of that dark age, justification, sanctification, baptism, all those But anyway, Amen. and he goes down. Amen. He goes down, the church goes up. It's just as perfect as it can be. Oh, it's beautiful. I just love it. This writer is the same as they deny the, 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 the word. And he is the word. Now, First stage, white horse, you are just a teacher, but an antichrist spirit in its doctrine, in its quality. It was innocent, it could hurt nothing, see, right? That's why Satan comes in. Oh, he's a slick bird. They told me, he said, now, you know, you're looking for ways. You don't know what's right and wrong. So now, if your eyes were open, you would know what. It said the fruit is very pleasant. It's good. It's, it's pleasant to the eye. You should take it out. You don't know whether it is or not. You no, I don't. But God said not to do it. But, oh, he, well, I know. But uh, God said he ain't with that. He said, surely you won't do that. It's as sweet as it can be. Look what it did. Watch this air of Christ's spirit rise up amongst the early church. A doctrine of Nicolaitan. Nicol conquered the laity. Make a holy man. Oh, it's just then. Oh, we just want fellowship. While you're scattered out here, nobody knows where nobody's at. I think we all ought to have an organization. It's be different. We both uh, put ourselves together. We ought to make a lodge out of it. That's what it is. There is no such thing as the Christian church of Methodist. That's not a church. That's a lodge. Baptist. That's not a church. It's a lodge. There's only one church. And that's a mystical body of Jesus Christ. And you're born into that. That's right. By predestination. Right? All the Father has given me will come. No man can come as the Father calls you. And all he's given me will come to me. So that, that's it. He just, the Lamb who sets there making, making intercession. The last one comes in, the little hell rings, and he walks out and takes his possession. So brings his church home, his subjects, and casts his enemy into the lake of fire, and all of his subjects go in there with him, and that's it. And then we walk out in the land. <clears throat> Same writer now. This first stage, he was innocent. And second, now that he went a little bit higher, a little more than that, the second stage, the Bible said he'd be given a crown. And they crowned the man. A superman. See? Crowned him. And then the Bible didn't call him a pope. The Bible called him a false prophet. Wow. Yeah, of course, he was be a false prophet by his antichrist spirit that taught antichrist against the original word. Because if he taught against the original word, it was antichrist, and the, and the word is God. Now, after that, we find him then crowned. When he got crowned, now he's very innocent and helpless and just a little fellow. Then in the Nicaea council he was made and Constantine gave him all the property. And then what did he do? Then he sees Satan giving his throne and authority. The Bible said so. As we went through it. Now the next thing we find out that the devil controls all politics that ever has been or ever will be. We find that in Matthew 4. And now we find out then that Satan already had politics, but he's trying to get the church. So he goes down to deceive it. He gets his superman, works him into an organization, and crowns him by her. Okay. Okay. Christ. Yeah. Christ acted in the stead of God. Yeah. See, this guy's a biker instead of God. See, yeah. this is the same instead of God. Well, he's supposed to be a biker under Christ. Now, now, when he did that, then what did he do then? He, Satan took his political power, which he was already over, and took the religious power, which he had already been crowned, and put them together, and then he made him another crown. 
said he holds about the wealth of the world. As we said last night about Russia and all that, they just take all the money to strip the people for everything they got. Oh, well, there you are. Now, notice, you see where their old money taken in church comes from? The middle of organization, a big something million dollar year. You see where the mother of it is? Thank you, Barno. Boys, Mark said to Matthew, 
I, I believe we've already got it, folks. Don't you think so? See, we already got it. Well, we're waiting on our ministry. We are strong out preaching. He told us to come up here and wait. This is eight days we've been here. Well, let's wait another one. Nine days comes. Then Mark comes around, or, or, or maybe one of the rest of them, John said, I, I, I believe we're waiting. Lord, I believe we've already got it, don't you? And I can see Simon because he had the keys, you know. Amen. Oh, wait a minute, boys. The scripture's got something to say about it. He never told us just how many days away, he said you stay there until. You stay there until Joel's prophecy comes to pass. Until Isaiah's prophecy is vindicated. For it was stammering lips in the little tongues when I speak to this people. And this is the refreshment. This is the wine. What is wine in the Bible? Refreshment. This is the refreshment that comes from the presence of the Lord. It's got to be scriptural now, see? So you see, wine represents stimulation of revelation. And when the Holy Ghost spell in the they seen the fire of God fall upon them, my let me get the steel wait a minute. First they know they got so stimulated to the feet I actually thought they were drunk. But they were stimulated by the revelation. She know that there was, we know that 
the size of human. Yeah. It's called the Christ. And when he comes, he will do these things. Yeah. He's seen it. He said, I'm he. <laughs> Let the stimulation start. Yeah. I don't know where she went. Shouting and down through the city, she left her old water pot, went down there and said to the man, come to see, I, if you only know the Eastern traditions, that's wrong for her to do that. Wow. Yes, sir. A woman of that type, nobody listened to her. Hmm. No, sir. See, she had a bar. And when she if she would go down the street like that and act like that, the man of the street paid attention to her brother. <laughs> she had a word of life there. She was stimulated. <laughs> Trying to put a house out on fire on a windy day. <laughs> oh, there's something bad. <laughs> she was ready. Yeah, it's good to put that out. That was God's fire. <laughs> she said, if you don't believe it, so you just come over here where the weedy's going on. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. And so the man went out there and he didn't do it one more time. But they know something happened to that woman. She would change so they believe Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They believe on Because faith comes by hearing, hearing the promise of God, the word of God, and watch it being made real. Because it's a seed, and when it's sowed, it'll take on it. It'll produce just what it's talking about. If it doesn't, then it doesn't go to seed. Or the sower didn't know how to sow it. You were the sin of God to sow seed. He might be sowing them on top of a rock or something. Well, you, so you see, the sower, sowing the seed, God takes care of it, falls the right way. Oh, my. <laughs> then, what does it say to this rider in black? Don't you hurt my wine and my oil. Don't you touch it. <laughs> Oh, I'm wide off. I've got just a little bit of it down there, but he's still a little bit there. <laughs> now, you can go on to and measure out all that kind of line, but you're putting out, that's up to you. You're going to pay for it down there. But when you come across that line, oh, you need a little. <laughs> oh, wow. If you can, if you, in other words, like this, if you catch some of my little flock, that's filled with my oil and wine, see. Uh, wine or the pure word, see. And you're going to kill them. Because you, you're doing that's what you're doing. Don't you force them to say any Hail Mary. Or oh, yeah. anything like that or some of your creeds. Yeah. You keep your hands off of them. They know where they're going. Yeah. Yeah. Or they are annoyed with my oil. Yeah. And by being annoyed with my oil. Oh, that bone's 
tenían. Don't you touch that bar on that chair. That was four keys, but the lamb was the one that said it. Oh, my. The lamb, not the four beasts that announced this, the lamb said itself, when the four beasts had come and seen, and they went and see it like that, they said, a major wheat for a penny, and a four bay, and so much like this, and so much party. But then the lamb cried out right among them and said, but don't hurt the Lord. Amen. That's right. Oh, my. Listen to it. Don't you hurt it, or you're going to pay for it someday. That's right. Oh, my. Peace. Tomorrow night, we're going to take that pig of horse rider. And I, I don't know, I do not know, God knows, that's true, I do not know one thing about it. No. I looked at my old context I had years ago, I seen Brother Grimm telling me, well, I might have went out. But I remember when I was preaching here before, I looked up to see what I said. Years ago, one day, I was going through the book of Revelations, I took all four horse riders one time. I said, a white horse, that was the early church, no doubt. I read that out of the book of the Adventists and I read some of that. I said, that's the early church that went forth conquering. And the next was a black horse. I said, I forget not what I call that black horse. I said, uh, or the red horse, rather. I said, that horse was probably mean if, if trouble was on the road. It's going to need a lot of wars for hang up or something like that. I said, probably it'd be a lot of war. I said, that's what that'd be. And then I said, the, the pale horse, or the, the black horse, I said, that, that means that that maybe it'll come a black time on earth when all the stars will, will put shine and the sun will go down and the moon won't give its light. I said, that's probably what that means. I said, the pale horse means a lot of sickness is coming on. I don't know what it means. But that's, that's my interpretation of it. Then I I just took the best I could stay here in the pulpit. But, oh, I almost said something. <laughs> <laughs>
tonight at 6.30, possibly a few minutes before that. Praise the Lord. My, what a wonderful, wonderful evening. Praise God forever. I know it's a little late, but I certainly appreciate your patience. It's 8.50, but my, it was worth it. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's uh, just bow our heads for a word of prayer. I believe tomorrow uh, we have... We'll gather together here at 9 o'clock. Now, how many would like for us to go right into the fourth uh, seal tomorrow night? Let me see your hands if, you, if that's what you would like for us to do. All right? All right. How many would like for there to be a preaching tomorrow night then? Both. Both. <laughs> preaching and testimony. All right? So... We'll, um, so if we start at 9, let's have some testimony and some preaching then. Because the fourth seal is about, it's over two and a half hours. So we'll just, we'll just do a little preaching tomorrow night and testimony and singing and shouting and praising the Lord. Let's, let's feast on the, on the three seals we have heard so far. Amen. Amen. And the third seal, my, how the, in the midst of all things, the lamb stood right up there. Don't you hurt the oil and the wine? Amen. Did you like that? It's stimulation of the revelation. As I've always contended, when you really receive the revelation of the word, it makes you emotional. It stimulates you. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's just bow our heads now. Precious Lord. We thank you for these things, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for the oil and the wine. And we see how we are, we're tracing this writer right from the first when he was riding his white horse. Oh, just a doctrine, just a, just the sayings and doctrines, Lord. And then, oh, with the power over the uh, religion of the day and then, Second seal, he gets the political power mixed with the religious power. He controls church and states and begins to put to death. Oh God. Then we see the third seal. Then he begins to accumulate the wealth. by collecting the wealth of the world. Selling the, uh, those creeds and dogmas to the people. Oh Father God. But the Lamb said, touch not the oil and the wine. And Lord Jesus, tonight we believe that your people are strengthened by hearing the word of God. And Lord, how that your prophet said at the beginning of the tape, that this day, this hour, each one of us should be determined to live so much closer to God than we've ever lived before. Yes. For the rapture is at hand. Yes. Help us, Lord. We commit ourselves and dedicate ourselves to that word of God, which alone can give us life. Walk now with each and every one of your children. Amen. Take us to our respective place of abode and bring us back again tomorrow evening for the watch service. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these blessings. Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you, my friends. So 9 o'clock p.m. tomorrow, we'll start. My, 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 my. Praise the Lord.